Is the cheese a metaphor for something? No, I think it's just cheese. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Say the name. Say the name, say the name. No. A story worth <laughs> telling. <laughs> but is it a song worth singing? <laughs> uh, no. We're back. It's a story worth telling. OMG, thank you so much for the amazing support on the last video. I and mean, we did not expect that. We're like, we were genuinely like shocked and amazed. And it's so lovely to see all of you and what, like, uh, read all your comments and your likes and your thoughts about the music video as well. Like it was a, such a beautiful thing. It's crazy, thing. it's burned up. And we missed so much. <laughs> Bloody like silver butt plug in the head. I didn't like, see the butt oh, plug either, that was God, mad. Okay. Today we are doing uh, one that I've wanted to do for a while. We're going back to- Robot uh, Mountain. <laughs> okay, back to- UK Robot version. Back. Yeah, UK it version. We're going back to drama films um, and it's one that we've noticed a lot of you as well have been commenting on and wanting to do. Uh, it is God's Own Country. Mm. To me, this film is incredible. I know I say that about a lot of things, but <laughs> like okay. I have my reasons. Um, and I just think it's, it is like the UK Brokeback Mountain, but not only that. There are so many parallels. There's a lot, there is yeah. a lot. But I also feel like it's how you would do Brokeback Mountain in- It's like updated version. Yeah, in, yeah. in like nowadays. Yeah. I feel like when you're watching the film, you kind of get the idea that the people behind the film understood what they were dealing with and the messages they were trying to show and the actors understood the characters they were trying to portray a lot better than... Mm. <laughs> I think it's a brilliant story and it's a fresh story as well. Like I'm particularly excited because I grew up in the north of England, which is where this is set. Story which is time. why you can't understand that. <laughs> Yeah, only Josh can actually understand what they're saying. Yeah, I'll, I'll, be our, I'll be our translator for this. Evening. Can you actually? <laughs> let's get let's into do it. it. Let's jump straight in. Um, because I'm so excited. So yeah, let's do it. Let's go feed the pigs. Oh, it's very broke back though. Very broke. It's back. like it's like probably took a lot of inspiration from it. Penetrating eyes across the the room. Yeah. Don't know if it's quite like that. Yeah, but also you got to think, right? So when I watch this, I think for gay men living away from like urban cities, it's really hard to kind of get socialized to other gay men. I'm just saying they thirsty hoes. <sighs> Oh, you're just putting words in my mouth now. We'll put the words in your own mouth. I am trying! <laughs> if you haven't had that much exposure to like other gay men and how to kind of have that, you kind of like lack a sort of socialization that you kind of require to have. And so then it just turns into having sex in a uh, horse trailer. In a cow truck. In a cow truck, yeah. Um, but so you know. <laughs> in, in, in the farming world, they have uh, things like farmer society, where they have like nights out and stuff, where all the young young mm -hmm. farmers get to come together, and this is kind of like that. He's off to the cattle auction. There happens to be this other kid there selling his heifer, and then they're like, "Let's get it on in the heifer truck." Was it all you? No. Well, do you want to tell your face? We should have a night out, Bradford or somewhere. What? That's what I love about folk like you. You fuck off to your posh colleges and that, and then you swim back here on your holidays thinking you know it all. Nice. You'd like me. It's funny. Remember, like you used to be. Before I had to join the real world. There's a lot of contradictions in what he's saying, because he keeps talking about having to join the real world, but also she's recognising that he's the person who's not been able to join the real world. And I, it also makes me think about the amount of, like, young queer people who may not be able to, like, explore their queerness and their lives because they are restricted by geographical restraints and you know their their livelihoods and stuff and it really kind of we talk about it all the time when you because obviously we live in london there's, there's a plethora of homosexuals around but like when when we go home or when you go into the countryside it's like nearest guy's 30 miles away absolutely and, and that's that's how it is but like we're also fortunate enough 
to have gone to university. We're also fortunate enough to, you know, live in a big central city. Like there's so many different elements that if we didn't have those advantages or some other people who don't have those may not just, you know, they just don't get to kind of fulfill their life in terms of also exploring their identity and their sexuality. And that I just find that so... Well, how do you explore it without another person to do that with? Right? Absolutely. It's be such a simple life being a sheep. He is such a mess. Like, he is all over the place. And you can't help but think how much of that is, yes, he's got the stress of the farm, but also being himself is taking that much of a toll that he's drink drinking every night, waking up under a tarp. And you don't often see the real kind of, like, everyday vulnerabilities expressed in characters. Like, you can have a main character, but they'll kind of look quite strong throughout most of the mm. film that has happened to deal with like difficult situations and i think it's really good his character i mean josh o'connor plays him so well as you say like he's struggling on a daily basis with like the idea of shame and 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 having to hide yourself and his mental health is so poor and like it's such a normal occurrence that we all so many people still do on a daily basis mm. but it, it's just shown in a very like natural and authentic way Poor baby sheep has seen so much. <laughs> Such a young age. <laughs> Get your ass in the gear, Jippo. Do we understand each other? Good. There's a lot of masculinity flying around there. It's a natural thing that we go to, we, we like run to insulting someone or being rude or being mean to someone when we can't like deal with our own shit. You're like the <laughs> lamb at this point. Like. <laughs> Ouch. I don't think any of these films are a showcase on how to have good sex. <laughs> I think for me, what stands out the most is every time I watch that, I'm always like, he doesn't want to kiss him. He doesn't want to yeah. kiss him. And it stands out because it's, I don't think he's ever actually kissed a guy. I don't think he's ever actually been more giving like he was in that moment to another person because he doesn't, because to him, it's, it's another form of, of intimacy that he can't, you know, bring himself to to accept. Yeah, he's like whatever. relinquishing his masculinity. So then maybe it's a good representation. Of yeah, it. absolutely. Well, that's the thing. But it's not great if you want to like. It's not a great I mean, that is messy. It, like... I do not want to do that in the mud. If the lamb wasn't traumatized before, it's fucking traumatized. But he now. is now. <laughs> I think that's the first time he smiled in the entire film. Hey, you might be right about that. I think it's such a beautiful scene. I mean, if you're like me and you like to read into like every oh, single gee. level of a film because you think you're some sort of PhD lecturer. Yes, professor. <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> With this film, there is so much imagery and symbolism to like nature. You know, the film is called God's Own Country. You've got like these innocent little lambs. The idea of like, this lamb being accepted mm. by its mother and like the way that kind of resonates with John's character. There's also a bit of dodgy symbolism there because that lamb is actually earlier described as a runt of the litter. Yeah. So we're we saying that and being so, gay is like the runt of the litter that then like comes into his own. Well, or? I think it's worse than that as well because he's actually like wearing a disguise. Oh God. Yeah. And he's being accepted only through that disguise. But then somehow it's kind of a, a touching moment. So it's like, there's a lot of like weird levels going on there. And the lamb gets a mummy. Yeah, and doesn't have to look at two men having sex all the time. 
Get me out of the skin now. <laughs> This, so, I don't like that word. One of the few words where, like, I'm not going to be the person who's like, I think we should reclaim it. You reclaim the word. Well, like, I, I think, you know, for me, like, the word queer, I feel like that's really great to reclaim. Fat, as a word, for me, has always kind of been... Gonna have to bleep that. For some other people, they can use it fine, and I don't, you know, hate them for that or anything, but for me, it doesn't work. But this is the only film where it's used, and I don't take offense by it. And I think that's really telling. For the power of a film to be able to kind of change my mind about how a word is used because it's used in, you know, in a relationship that I'm seeing yeah, on it's, screen, it's, it's, it's quite effective. A, it's used as a term of endearment. Endearment, which is yeah. Really odd. When in your. If you're okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, in summary, I don't like the word and I don't feel like it should be used really. I don't like the word either and I agree with you. Next. Next! <laughs> beautiful he's letting it's himself like scene. finally explore romantic connection just so physical mm. and that you can see that that's just like him just being him in that moment yeah it's beautiful they're not even doing anything they're just like can you remember the first connecting. time you learned to kiss someone yes was it with a guy or was it with a girl it was a girl right did you experience it again when it was with a guy because i did because you do you yeah. have this like <gasps> And then I remember kind of almost, not like relearning how to kiss, but then like suddenly discovering that you're kissing someone and it feels right. It feels for me. really different. It does. It feels it does. so different. It feels so different. What's wrong with you? No. He said nout, which means nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I can do that for you, Nan. You're sickening for something. You're sickening for something. It uh, means like, what do you want? I think it's a beautiful thing, the performances, when you notice that he has probably been the happiest live at home that he's been in a long time. And when she recognises that, mm. you know, I feel like that's a really authentic thing because... I remember a huge difference in sort of my mood and change com coming from when I was not out and very much in the closet and hiding something to them, you know, being open and people aware of my sexuality and not having to hide something. And you do, you go through elevations of mood and, and, and behaviours and I think it's done really well there. Obviously, he's, he's not even come out yet, but he's just been able to experience his sexual yeah. identity. And it already has an impact on his happiness, his mood, his his being. How is he? Don't you want to speak to the doctor? John. What if they say something I don't want to hear? And that's his answer. I'll be here to support you. And all it takes is a touch. Very nice. Yeah. Touches his hand in the same supportive way. I think that's also Great kind change. of what, like, a lot of this film is about, in the sense that he's learning to love people. He's learning to love people. So I don't know what it is about that. That could be their life together. But yeah, like, there's something about that little moment of seasoning and trying his food that like i just i'm mesmerized by it representation of queer lives in some of the smallest little nuances of like mm. how people live it's an image that i would could see myself doing with my boyfriend i think if they... i had one Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2021 <laughs> i think you're right i think this film it's those moments that you watch and you go Oh, like, yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah. I really get that. I mean, don't Season eat my food. My pasta. <laughs> 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 
it's difficult to necessarily always understand a family member's reaction. I've noticed it a lot with like, specifically parents, mums and dads, when they discover their child is, is queer. And I think what I like about this is that you never really quite know what side she sits on. You never really quite know. She, it's a, it's a very like undisclosed thing because you know later on she gives him the address. She encourages it a little bit, but she's still very stern. And I think she kind of represents those people who are like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not homophobic, and it's like I'm more worried about you having a bad life or you know Definitely what it means or if you're gonna get you know bullied. You, you don't really know, and it could be a multitude of reasons why she's crying. Not necessarily just, I don't like gay people. But it could also be, oh, but how's his dad going to take it? What will other people think of it? Yeah, exactly. And I... How will the farm survive? Will he leave? Absolutely. 100%. I think it's our job as queer people to kind of, you know, help them understand that. And like, maybe, you know... Guide them through. Guide them through that. I think because of the rise in like YouTube clips of, you know, people telling their coming out stories and also like people videoing themselves coming out to their parents or whatever, we've seen quite a lot of examples where there isn't much reaction or there is this kind of like idealistic reaction where it's like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Like, thank you for telling me. We love you. There's no drama. You know, even if it's because there are all these other thought processes that aren't necessarily this sense of homophobia it's almost like a stereotype isn't it that you know a gay person will be bullied will have a more difficult life may get more yeah. serious like sexual infections or whatever like it's emotional and we should expect people to react emotionally mm. and that's exactly what's happening here yeah. like it's a lot and like it's difficult to process mm. and then this is the result it's just like a behavior that's not malicious it's not it's not anything it's just a way of expressing all these feelings and thoughts together. Coming out and declaring yourself as queer or LGBT is always viewed as like another one of those extra pressures. And until we get to the day where that's no longer a thing, I think it just shows the way in which she's just ha- having to deal with another pressure. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because she's already dealing with so much pressure yeah. in her life. And it's a shame that we view it as that. It's a shame that we view the coming out or discovering someone's sexuality as, as an additional stress. As an additional stress, because it's it just shouldn't be that. How do you say a farm? Just like the motel bed scene in very Fermo. How do you say a sheep? Oi. It's like the first moment in the film where he's actually taking the time to get to know him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cute. literally. Yeah. It's really cute. Why do you think he cheated? Well, he's drunk. He's really, really drunk in the scene. And that's like his old habits and slipping back into that. Mm. Almost slipping back into a comfort. I think also it's a sort of sense of telling yourself, oh, this is good, too good to be true. And so then like, mm. you know, purposely ruining something of a self-destructive behaviour. Yeah. Because he also never experienced a relationship. I think he walks out of that cubicle regretting it, though. And yeah. not feeling comfortable. Yeah. I can manage. Don't talk to us, lad. I've said I can do it. Thank you. I love that scene because kind of harkens back to the way in which there was such this toxic masculine energy that was coming from his dad and also just to see it not between the two love characters but between just him and his father an example of showing masculinity that is far more caring and Mm. loving Mm. it's the scene that i wish so many other films kind of like took note from i can make this work but way I want to do it, not you. I've got to go get him. I want to go and get him. Mick, you happy? Yeah. I think it's good. Good? Is that is that a coming out scene? 
I, I don't oh, I don't know. It's just kind of like around the, the edges of it, isn't it? It's like this person will make me happy and I can make this work, but only with him. And you have to accept that that's going to happen. And he does. I mean, that is, in a sense, a coming out scene. Charles? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? I to see you. You shouldn't have come. I'm not the answer. I'm trying to do this. Don't you see? I'm, I'm trying to sort it out. And I want you to come back. And I want us to be together. Uh, yeah, they both act that so well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like some Hollywood 90s like rom com. They didn't say I love you. They, they, they don't even say I love you. No, that's so true. That's why when I watch that, I feel like that's authentic. The difference between his character in that moment and the character you, you're introduced to at the start of the film, they're just so different. Mm. And I like to believe that that is him being able to be himself and just live honestly. Absolutely. And look how happy he is. Yeah. And look how shit he was before. Like, that journey is just amazing. The sea, the steep road. When I watched that the first time, going on your artsy trend, I thought them towing away the caravan was a metaphor for them, like, towing away the past. My artsy trend? Yeah, thinking about it in like the layers in the artsy way, them turning away that caravan. Get on my uh, glass, my university glasses, where we dissect this. Yes, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take bye. your issues. Bye. Yeah, bye, issues. Or they just need the money. <laughs> oh yeah. And the time stops. Our track. Hmm. What I think this film does is it ends on the idea that, yes, he's come a long way, but there is a long way more still to go. They've really not had the conversations with his nan and his father yet, you know what no. I mean? They, There's no guarantee that they are automatically going to be so comfortable in this new, you know... Get a refund of the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in this, in, this, in this new way of life. And so what I love is that it kind of just says... This is where he's going to, but there's yeah. more to it, and that can take them anywhere. And it's beautiful because I think for so many of us, that that kind of is our everyday. Like, it, there's yeah. there's no ultimate. Uh, then it's great, and life is great. There's always kind of progression and always journeys. Learning. Yeah, absolutely, and that's brilliant. I love that it ends that way. So that is God's own country. Oh, it's so good. That oh. is that is a cracking film. I think for representation, it is fantastic. It shows a area. It's a non-cliche. Yeah. Kind of fringe representation. Yeah, but absolutely. Perfect. Should we start doing like a rating? A representation rating? No, because I'm just going to always be like, 10! 10! <laughs> <laughs> so long. But I do think this is like at least a 9. This is a 9 out of 10. I think this is a 9. Red <laughs> tractor, RSPCA, a short <laughs> tap. <laughs> What do you think? Is it top tier or bottom tier? <laughs> oh, God. Well, what are we going to do next, Josh? Oh, well, we're doing Love Bitch next. We are. The, the season finale, finale on Disney Plus. Yeah. Ooh, so if you're watching, come check out come our check review. It out if that. you're not watching, go binge it now. And there's so much more to come. Yes. So subscribe, like, comment, and dance. be fabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Love. Bye. <laughs> Love. Love. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.